just explain why you're making this donation to this fund and why you're doing it now. Uh, well, thanks, Julie. It's great to be with you both. Um, I first met, first met Malala back in 2015 at the screening of her documentary in San Francisco, and I was completely enamored both uh, by her and her organization <laughs> and her mission to make sure every girl has access to 12 years of free, safe, and quality education. And the more I came, came to know the Malala Fund, the more the scale of the problem started to become clear. Imagine 130 million girls around the world without access to education. Um, I wanted to invest more time and to understand the problem. So we did travel to Africa together back in 2016. I joined the leadership council, um, even had team members at Airbnb who volunteered to redesign the website for Malala Fund at malala.org. I've seen you mention that statistic before, by the way, and I think you called it outdated, which I think is a, a polite term and a diplomatic term for it, um, which is the crucial part of the, of the fight and the efforts that you're both making. Um, Malala, I think most people watching this will remember, will, will know your story, will understand why this fight is so personal to you. Um, thank you for, for the work that you're doing first and foremost, but just explain how important this donation is and, and what the money's gonna go towards. First of all, I am just so grateful for this opportunity that Joe has given to Malala Fund. I cannot tell you how excited I was when I received the call from Joe and he asked me about the vision of Malala Fund. And I said, I like we need to do more for girls. There are still a hundred more than a hundred million girls who do not have access to education. Girls are not learning quality education in their schools. Girls are missing on the opportunity, but it's not just a loss for girls. It's a loss for the world. It's an economic loss. It's a political and a social loss as well. Um, so I was sharing all of my ambitious plans and Joe said, you know, I, I will support you. And when I heard about his generous contribution to Malala Fund, I was just so grateful. And when you hear about the support of people, it helps you to believe even more in the mission that you fight for. We have been fighting for girls' education uh, through Malala Fund for the past 10 years. And to know that Joe has been with us consistently from the very beginning has helped us do so much work already. And it will, this, his support will help us to do the work for many years ahead. Our, our goal is to ensure to, uh, that we create a world where all girls can learn and lead, where they have access to 12 years of free quality and safe education. I was one of those girls who could not go to school. So I know how important it is for every girl, even that one last girl to have access to education. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, gonna help you virtually double the amount that you've invested, just to give people again a reminder of the scale of the investment that we're talking about. Joe, as you said, this is not just a one-off as enormous. I think mind-blowing is the term I would use. And I think um, I think we're hearing that from Malala in, in the excitement that she's expressing with, with what she's gonna be able to do and what the fund's gonna be able to do with this money. But um, why join the Leadership Council? Just explain that decision, because this is multi-years that we're talking about of working together, just finding innovative ways, I think, of, of helping women, young girls, access education that, as Malala quite rightly said, I mean, it's an economic benefit to all, to society, to allow this to take place. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right, Julia. Along the way, I had a big aha moment, which was that educating girls has a massive ripple effect right. on other global topics. If you care about economic development, you should get involved. If you care about climate change, you should get involved. If you care about extreme poverty, you should get involved. Education equality is one of the most powerful ways to address these global topics. And so if you invest in girls' education, you're actually investing in a better planet for all of us, which is why I decided to step up my efforts here. Yeah, I, it's um, fantastic. Uh, Malala, talk to me about some specific examples, if you can, because I was looking on your website and we can, we can show this of what was going on in the different countries. I mean, I saw the work obviously that you're yes. doing in Afghanistan, the statistics there, I think now 3.7 million people out of school, 60% of those are, are girls. And obviously that's, that's worsening Lebanon, I believe a third of girls at school in Lebanon now are Syrian refugees. I mean, the, the, the need, the requirements, the investment that, that is required at this moment, sort of overwhelming. Talk about specific projects. So the situation for girls' education is alarming because 
there are human made disasters that we have yeah. faced including the wars and conflicts and then there are uh, you know other natural disasters or still you know climate related disasters that are impacting including the recent floods in pakistan or the current situation in afghanistan where girls education is completely banned girls cannot have access to secondary schools or universities women cannot do jobs the situation is alarming in many parts of the world and we have been taught this idea of progress being linear and that it will happen with time but what we are witnessing right now is that uh, we not only need to achieve these uh, these moments of progress but we need to maintain them we are just so we are living in a very vulnerable uh, society we do not know uh, for when our rights can be taken away from us when laws can change and and when when the situation uh, can you know when we are moving towards an an unequal society um so for me it's just even more critical right now to ensure that we are investing in girls education through malala fund we work with local education activists in the countries that you mentioned including pakistan brazil nigeria ethiopia they are the people who are doing the research they are doing advocacy change policies they are engaging with the local communities parents teachers religious leaders community leaders to advocate for girls access to education we uh, are we are working directly with girls as well we have a platform called assembly which is a digital newsletter through which girls are sharing their stories of how they are addressing the problems that they are facing they're not just talking about uh, the problems but but how they're becoming the change makers and fighting them including climate change or mental health or the quality of education in school or the, the discrimination that they face or the racism that they face so uh, we believe in girls being the activists who can you know who need to be heard and we help girls to be present at the platforms where decisions about their future are made including the un or um, or or the climate uh, conferences like these are the girls who's whose future is directly impacted by the decisions that leaders make when they are not present in their rooms their voices are not heard their the issues that they face are not taken into consideration so our priority is to ensure that girls get the opportunity to raise their voice and then they need to be heard in the in the key rooms as well uh, and 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 access to education for girls is their human right but it's also an economic opportunity as well and for so many reasons this has to be a, a priority for everyone you know you said something really important which was um some of the crisis that we see around the world is um as a result of just devastating accidents things like earthquakes that we've seen but some of them are human made tragedies war yeah. for example and what we've seen and on your website where you talk about your history and your background one of the things that you say is um it's not just about allowing girls to learn it's also about allowing them to lead and i think when you look at the leadership around the world the importance of getting women to a standard where they are educated enough to lead nations and perhaps make better decisions is also vital malala would you agree we need more female leadership around the world no doubt i 100% support female leadership and and i support education because education creates access for women to so many opportunities that they may not have especially in patriarchal societies um in challenging environments so education becomes like a beacon of hope for them like that's the only light that they see think about the girls in afghanistan right now who do not have access to secondary education they do not see a future for themselves and they are fighting every day for their right to education they are protesting on the streets uh, they are there globally as well those of uh, those who uh, succeeded in the evacuation they are raising their voices so when you look at their dedication it tells you that they do not take education for granted education is future for them um and in and i often tell people that if you are ever in doubt about the importance of education go ask a girl <laughs> you can ask a girl anything, quite frankly. Joe, I have to bring you in on this point. I have about 30 seconds left. I think the importance of, of the gift that you've provided and the importance of, of female education and, and leadership. You've already said it, really, the beneficial aspects, but um, would you agree more female leadership perhaps around the world and we may be in a better place? Yeah, I think Maul said it perfectly. You know, educa yeah. education is a right. 
it's fundamental right for boys and for girls. And there's, you know, many, many girls around the world who don't have that right right now. Yeah. Um, and Malala, I think it'd be great if you shared that statistic of the opportunity cost of not doing this economically. Yeah. If all girls receive 12 years of free quality in, uh, education, it would add up to $30 trillion to the world economy. There is the economic benefit. And, you know, I think Joe and I will agree <laughs> on this. Like, with all the benefits, you know, it's a human right. It's the right of a child yeah. to have yeah. access to learning. They should be able to read and write and access knowledge. They should be able to achieve their goals in their life. So we need to respect this right and we need to give it to them it's our responsibility it's the leader's responsibility and i hope that people will do more for it it is a collective complex issue and it's important that we all play our role uh, and i hope that leaders become more ambitious and they and, and they make it their top priority